I'd like to start by welcoming you all to this, our next episode in the Open Networking webinar series. Today, we're looking at data center and service provider solutions with IP Infusion. My name is Kira McCarthy. I'm the Global Marketing Director for EPS Global. Just to give you a bit of background on EPS, uh, we're the open networking distributor of choice globally for a whole host of industries. So we sit at the center of the open networking ecosystem. So we bring together the hardware and the open network operating software, it's a bit of a tongue twister, um, together to create turnkey solutions for our customers. So we offer technical advice, configuration of software and hardware bundles. And that's your switches, optics, your cables and more. We've been around for 20 years and we've 28 locations around the world, so we're never far away. So if I can introduce you to our speakers today. Okay, so Barry, um, he is our resident techie and he has a very deep knowledge of open networking. So Barry enjoys a pint of Guinness and he's an avid Celtic supporter. I'll let him speak for himself later, but he writes an excellent monthly blog that is worth checking out on our website at epsglobal.com. So moving on to our first speaker from IP Infusion, that's Craig Schaefer, and we're delighted to welcome um, Craig to our webinar today. Craig is a senior director for the Global Channels and Alliances with IP Infusion. He leads IP Infusion's partnership sales globally and has recently launched the company's new partner Infusion program. Having been in technology sales for more than 20 years, Craig has previously held leadership positions at WeWork, Voyager Search, HPE, Schneider Electric, Nortel and AT&T. Craig lives in LA in California, where I'm sure it's, it's sunny there. It's not as sunny here today in Dublin. Um, I'd also like to welcome William Graves, who is a senior solutions engineer uh, for global channels and alliances for IP Infusion. Uh, William, you're very welcome today. Uh, William provides technical leadership and support for IP Infusion's ecosystem of partners. He has spent 18, he spent 18 years at Cisco as a consulting systems engineer for software management and orchestration solutions. Most recently, William was at Telco Systems where he was the lead technical resource for UCPE sales into service providers. He lives in the Dallas, Texas area. So I'll just a bit of housekeeping before I, I um, hand over to Barry there. So if you have any questions, just type them into the Q&A window of Zoom and we'll get to the questions at the end. And if there's anything that we don't cover today, we'll respond to you personally after the webinar. Uh, so I'll hand over to you, Barry. Thanks, Kira, for the lovely introduction. And thanks everybody for joining us this afternoon or this evening or this morning. Um, I think we actually have attendees from Asia, Africa, India, Europe and America today. So we've we've pretty much covered the globe. So whatever time it is, um, we really appreciate you taking a time time out of your day to uh, to join us. So my name is Barry. I'm a network engineer with EPS Global. Um, so I'm going to cover the open networking ecosystem, and by that I mean where does the hardware come from? Where are these service provider open networking solutions coming from? End-to-end -end solutions. Um, Craig is going to have a look at the corporate overview from IPI. He's going to look at the trends, um, like disaggregation and migration. He's going to look at Danis Vallada and the relationship with AT&T. Williams then is going to take us through the actual use cases. So we've the disaggregated cell site gateway or cell site router or Odyssey, or it's got it's got lots of names. Uh, virtual OLT, SD Edge, Carrier Ethernet, op Open Optical Transport with the Cassini from Edgecore, and then their data center solution. And we'll summarize and we'll take questions at the end. So, um, Kira mentioned we're EPS Global. We're 21 years old this year, and we've been involved in open networking now since 2016. So that came about. We became distributors, global distributors for Edgecore Networks. For anybody who doesn't know Edgecore, they're um, a subsidiary of the Acton Group, who are an ODM, OEM out of Taiwan. Um, basically, if you've used a switch that's not Cisco, you've probably used an Acton Group switch. Um, but pretty early in our relationship with Edgecore, we realized that the normal rules of distribution don't apply to open networking. Um, so we began evangelizing about all things open networking and talking to um, 
the software vendors not just some of the software vendors all the software vendors because they all have their own niche area and this is how our relationship with IP Infusion blossomed I suppose uh, we provide other services for our customers so I think everybody loves the kind of disaggregation uh, capex savings and no vendor lock-in of open networking but then when it comes to it they're a little confused about possibly who to get software off who to get hardware off who to get the transceivers off cabling so on and so forth so we try and take that hassle out of open networking for our customers we will load for vendors and customers we will load um software and licensing uh bundle that with transceivers and cabling and dax um and basically have the switches ready to slide into racks when they arrive in the customers locations okay so moving on to the actual hardware so the hardware is obviously an important part of this the guys are going to go through the software and um, so where does the, the all the hardware starts with the open compute project so the OCP were started in 2011 and the way it kind of works is um, any member can give in a hardware specification so I'm going to imagine I'm giving in a 25 gig and um, switch with 400 up, uplink ports um, okay that's fine so that hardware specification is accepted then companies like edge core networks will give in designs design files for that specification if the design files are accepted then edge core will go off and they'll build that product once the product is accepted as an OCP accepted product the edge core will then release all the design information to the community so they really are creating similar to what the Linux community did a kind of open creative collaborative effort all around hardware once the product is actually completed it moves to the OCP marketplace so you can view all the products and um, it's worth a look actually you can view all the products and um, that have been OCP certified on the website there's integrated solutions as well but more importantly I think than it integrated solutions are the relationship with the ONF and tip so this is where their real integrated solutions uh, kind of take place and I'm going to look at the two of these now so the ONF found in 2011 I think it was a couple of months before the OCP but they kind of started with the idea to extol the virtues of software defined networking and open networking um, pretty much like what we did in 2016 when we started on this journey uh, 2012 they standardized the OpenFlow protocol so OpenFlow was the first protocol that allowed for the separation of the control and data plane uh, there's lots more now uh, 2014 they released open networking operating system which uh, is more of a controller now for their for their solutions in 2016 for this is important for our, our stuff with the service provider and um, they begin work on their platform called cord so cord is central office re-architected as a data center for anybody that doesn't know where the central office is it's kind of the last point of the service providers network before they supply the residential enterprise broadband kind of stuff uh, but you've probably walked by multiple central offices and not known they're kind of earthquake proof grim buildings with maybe a camera on the front and some big fans on the back but inside they house OLTs broadband network gateways routers uh, some backhaul stuff like transponders and switches and servers so um, so the idea was to redesign all of this using bare metal and open source so 2019 they released their first reference designs uh, SIBA with software enabled broadband access using OLTs and switches trellis is spine and leaf architecture within the central office and ODTN is our open disaggregated transport network and we're actually going to cover that when we look at the telecom infra project um, 2020 was a big year so they had uh, production rollout uh, with T-Mobile of OMAC um, Trellis has been used in Comcast production network and Turk Telecom with SIBA and I think only for the pandemic um, AT&T and Deutsche Telekom were, were pretty close to production of SIBA pods as well so there's a bunch of other other projects in field trials and um, so it's been and just to give you some idea of the market size we're talking about here so 650 dynamics did um, recently release the report after speaking extensively to service providers and if we look over here at the at the pie chart obviously ran I don't know that's that about 35 percent we've ran broadband access service provider optical transport and evolve packet core so with just the products projects from the ONF alone 73 billion of that 490 billion is up for grabs so primarily in the broadband access and optical transport and that's just with the ONF we're going to look now at the telecom infra project where a whole heap another heap of that 490 billion is up for grabs hopefully so telecom infra project so telecom Imp tip started again in 2016 and um, around the same time as the ONF started the cord platform they work very closely with the ONF and the OCP from the OCP side all the hardware they use 
comes the majority of it comes from the OCP is born in the OCP starts life in the OCP and as far as the ONF is concerned a lot of their membership I think is made up of similar guys so Deutsche Telekom Telefonica etc and obviously they don't want to be putting resources into two companies doing the same projects so they work closely in there is overlap but not too much overlap uh, which is the idea so they've over 500 member organizations we're members ourselves and that's pretty impressive for a four-year-old organization and when you see the caliber of the organizations involved it is pretty impressive they also have a marketplace where you can view the products that are used in the end-to-end -end solutions called the tip exchange and finally they have three kind of distinct areas project groups so access looks after all their ran initiatives like open ran or open cellular uh, two is backhaul or transport looks after everything from the mast back to the core and then the third area is core and services which looks after um does some slicing and orchestration projects and things like that so i just want to look at one project in particular just to sh give you an idea of of how far they've come in uh, in four years to producing end-to-end -end solutions so if we look on the left hand side you've a user using a mobile phone uh radio frequency picked up by the cell tower down into the baseband unit and now we have to get the packet back to the mobile core so into the cell site gateway so we have our cell site routers which um which william will cover later on so these were again born in the ocp um bare metal from eufy space or from edge core with ip infusion or danos viata sitting on it into our aggregation routers again born in the ocp uh, sounds like a song born in the ocp um again um edge core bare metal edge core 5916 xks xl and um, with ip infusion sitting on it and then depending on distance we have optical transponder so the cassini muxed amplified depending on distance steam muxed and now we're back at our core so now we have a bare metal or white box solution for an end-to-end -end solution which i think is pretty impressive so that's that's kind of a snapshot of where this where the hardware came from and how the onf and the ocp and the o and tip are trying to produce end-to-end -end solutions and now ipi will explain how they've kind of fit it